आर सो मेनी चैलेंजेस बट इफ यू से कि नाउ सर में कफन बांधा है लेट एनी थिंग कम एंड आई विल डू इट नथिंग कैन स्टॉप यू यू बिकम इनविंसिबल वी फाइट बैटल्स एवरी डे इन लाइफ वेन यू आर बोल्ड एंड यू गो सेट फॉर्थ एज अ बोल्ड पर्सन यू विल बी फेसिंग अ लॉर्ड ऑफ फ्लैक कारगिल इज नॉट अ स्टोरी इट्स अ सागा इट्स अ सागा ऑफ ब्लड sacrifice grit determination and courage if we try then we can capture we may capture and we will be part of history and we may emerge victorious we have a chance of victory we have a chance to win so try you must Good evening, everyone. Good evening to all of the audience that we've got today. A very distinguished group of audience that we have from the healthcare fraternity, uh, both doctors, nurses, paramedics, and everyone who's been fighting this war uh, of COVID. Today morning, I was actually sitting in front of uh, you know I was sitting and sipping a cup of tea. when uh, you know it occurred to me i should look back on what april 1st last year looked like and i opened the times of india and when i looked at it some of the news items that appeared were oil marketing companies decide to increase jet fuel prices by 1% a famous industrialist implicated of financial misappropriation believes that you know uh, confiscating his uh, assets was draconian now when you look at the news today it's very different 2500 people tested positive doctors in the front line i think we are we are amidst very unprecedented times very uncertain times and in uncertain times like this we look for we look up to people who've been in such unprecedented times we look to people who can tell us how this can be done so today with us uh, is one such person and i'm very very pleased to introduce to you colonel lalit rai colonel lalit rai is a veteran from the indian army he has fought in the kargil battle and if i may uh, the battle of kalubar amongst the many battles battle of kalubar in batalik sector he he led the first gorkha uh first battalion of the 11 gorkha regiment in 1999 in the kargil war he spent 40 years uh you know training and leading uh operational leadership uh he's a post graduate from usmane university in management he's also post graduate from naval post graduate school in uh, california an instructor from Nash for national defense academy he's also been an instructor of the officers training academy he's had many close encounters with death uh, and as he mildly put it close to about 20 of them in his life um and if anyone had to speak to us about how do we take courage in crisis it had to be someone like him who's actually faced these crises imagine 1700 feet above sea level Minus thirty-two degrees Celsius, and where AD rifles or AD assault weapons guns are are raining down at you, close to over thousand rounds every minute. I think Dr. L uh, Colonel Lalit Rai is probably the most apt person for a situation like this, and I welcome him uh, to speak to all of us, and and talk to us about. uh you know how we can have courage in these unprecedented times uh, colonel thank rai you. over to you thank you thank you anuj it's always a pleasure firstly i would like to thank dr reddies for giving me this wonderful platform where of course i can't see the doctors or the paramedics or the healthcare people but i know they would be listening to me and seeing me on the screens you know just like he looked back somewhere in last year april i was also thinking back in may what was happening 
and then somewhere in mid may or little beyond that i remember we were the first ones to be called there and i was making my way i took my battalion we were absolutely making up the strengths and building up in you know to build up your capability to attack and at that time we did not know whether it was the these infiltrators were just terrorists were the pakistan army nothing so the enemy was unknown i was flown in from a place called doda where i was already combating terrorists over there straight into the battle over there and believe me those few days and months that i spent over there being bombarded day in and day out no sleep no proper sleep you know and absolutely restricted in your movements uh, ensuring that the wellness of your troops the safety of your troops are there you being the commanding officer and then at the same time preparing for war it reminded me of the situation that we are facing today because believe me this is war that is happening here there's a little difference though in uh, actual conventional war you had the front line far away from you you had the soldiers fighting in front for you you of course burned the candles behind you gave them moral support and uh, that was good but today my dear friends this whole thing has shifted the front lines have shifted the person who is fighting in front is not the soldier you are the soldier the enemy is at the gates and the enemy is not known because though we know that it's corona virus but we don't know everything about this virus and therefore it's an unknown enemy and to make matters worse you don't have the weapon to kill it this virus you don't have the weapon to kill it there is neither a vaccine today nor is there any tested medicine which can be used for the treatment of this as a particular medicine of course today i got very good news that uh, gilead uh, pharmacy from us they have used some remdesivir or something uh, some uh, molecule which is very effective etc but again not tested to a great extent so in a scenario like this what happens there is a curfew and there is a lockdown justifiably so because you cannot expect people to be moving around and spreading the infection because of this curfew and the lockdown you are confined to the four walls of your house you cannot do those things what you used to do before you cannot follow that routine there are thousand and one things which were pending which you had to do which you thought you could not survive without doing there were so many repairs and renovations and other things and jobs which are pending so you are totally totally in a scenario where you are absolutely uncomfortable and this discomfort compounded with the fact that the enemy is unknown and you do not have a weapon to fight it brings about fear the fear of the unknown what is going to happen a b it brings out a lot of disorientation in your being because you get totally disoriented and if you recollect the first one week you didn't know what hit you because you thought it was a good party time and you started having a good time but come second week you knew this is not on and after 40 odd days of lockdown the <laughs> atmosphere is totally different people are feeling absolutely frustrated some are feeling angry fear has turned to panic some people are obsessed so this is the scenario here today so in a you know in a situation like this from all my past years of experience in both army and the corporate i have put together about five or six factors that we should look into we should put our thoughts into 
And these five factors, I dare say, would probably see you through this lockdown and this whole situation better. In other words, I will give you a very different perspective of what we are facing today. So the first factor I bring to you, which always comes up, you know, when a situation like this arises is courage. Because where there is fear, there is courage. Too much of fear brings about panic. And once you're in a panic situation, you lose your composure, you lose your ability to think calmly and come to a good solution. So therefore, it is very important that we control this factor called fear and therefore courage. Now, courage should not be mistaken as absence of fear. No. Even the biggest of the yodhas, the, 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 you, can, you can think of anyone, they all had fear. Because see, it is a genetical, genetic wiring where the law of preservation tells us that you've got to preserve yourself, your life. And that brings about fear because you, there is a fear of you losing your life. And all of us, even me, there were many times where we are absolutely, absolutely scared. But the difference here is those people who overcome this fear concentrate on how to find a solution and then go about facing that same thing or the same situation which has brought about this fear, of course, not without inconsideration uh, and not without uh, uh, your being cautious. With all those things, calculated risks, everything, you face it squarely. And that, my friends, is courage. I remember when uh, we got ready for launching the battle and the green signal was given to us to capture this post called Khalubar Post, which is located right in the heart of the enemy positions or defenses. Now, the importance of this place was it was a communication hub, plus it was a very, very dominating area and an area from where we could launch further attacks. Therefore, it would turn the tide of war in the metallic sector. So when a situation like that came, it was thought of as mission impossible because it was in the heart of the enemy defenses. And here, you could not even progress to one feet ahead of you so much of fire from the enemy. They were so well ensconced and absolutely well deployed over there. So in a scenario like that, one got a chance, one took it, said, I will do it. I told my boys, I came and explained to them, we have volunteered to do this and we must do this. We will capture Kalubar top. And believe me, it was not just the making of the choice and having the courage to volunteer. We have got to also implement it. And the casualty ratio calculated at that point of time was above 80 to 90% of casualties. That means there was very, very less chances of you coming back alive. So without much thought, we prepared ourselves and then we set on. And we, with two companies worth of my troops, we marched ahead. And I remember at some point of time when we were very close to the enemy positions, we pulled out our kukris and my boys, five feet something, started literally hacking and chopping their way up with the heads rolling down. And of course, to cut the story short, we reached the top. And we, after fighting a bitter battle for three to four days, we captured it too. In other words, it was the dare to do, the courage to take up this challenge that helped us achieve this goal. If you had really seen the theoretical part of it, it was not considered possible to come back alive from this operation. So therefore, the only way to, you know, overcome any type of fear or a situation is to take it head on. Even when you are ambushed in the military, the teaching is even if you are ambushed from 
either side with all your energy together you have to break through the ambush if you try to run at that point of time rest assured the situation will be totally adverse to you because they would have already planned those escape areas from where you would probably run away but when you hit them straight on and head on that is least expected there are more chances of survival so therefore do not fear because there are a lot of casualties just because of fear itself you know the fear itself kills people the actual situation as the survey has proved the actual situation kills only 10% of the actual situation kills a person it is the fear of the fear that kills most of the people so let's firstly remove this let's have that courage to come out face it when i say come out i don't mean come out of your gate and start walking out what i mean is come out of this fear psychosis and get out move out march out there and face the enemy next is the next factor that comes to my mind is the aspect of your duty now duty is often little confusing and mixed up to people is it duty towards your family is it duty towards your organization is it duty towards your nation yes duty towards all and even duty towards yourself because unless you yourself are fit and unless you yourself are looking after yourself you cannot look after others so in the duty i recollect some people told me and they asked me you know ki kadan in the army how is it possible that uh, uh, people you know they are the soldiers are ordered there is a machine gun in front of you there and that machine gun is spewing death at the rate of like his anuj said 1000 rounds a minute and those bullets are zinging past you yet this boy or the group of boys they get up without even thinking twice and they charge and they attack how is it possible how can you motivate your people to do such a thing so those people i say look it is not motivation alone because motivation is a more of a capitalistic concept it's transactional it says agar tum ye karoge to tumhe ye milega if you do this your names will be in the annals of history if you do this you will be recognized as a hero you will get this you will get that in other words it's transactional so what is it that makes people go beyond motivation and what is that which is beyond motivation the word that i coin is volition volition means you are not doing it because someone is telling you to do it you are doing it because you feel right from here that it is your duty to do it to make and explain it easier go to the karma yoga concept what is the karma yoga concept it says phal ki chinta na kar karm kiye ja that means don't look for your consequences don't look for profit don't look for recognition don't look for reward you do it because it is your bounden duty to do it and that is the jazba that is the josh which has to be inside your heart to do what you have to do that duty 100% and all these other theoretical questions will be answered when you reach that plateau as far as medical practitioners are concerned i am so happy they have an oath just like we the army officers take an oath they have the hippocratic oath and they have got those four factors in the hippocratic oath i uh, still remember that autonomy justice beneficence uh, non maleficence if all our practitioners follow these and not just merely treat it as a right or a passage for your graduation and follow this oath in letter and spirit i think half a battle will be won today in this hour of need there is definitely 
a need for every doctor who is trained to come out and think about others, think about using the talents and the knowledge that they have to save your own people, your own humankind over here. And this is, again, an uh, aspect about duty, which is very, very important and very, very close to my heart. Now, along with duty comes the very, very, uh, uh, what shall we say, a uh, conjointed uh, factor called discipline, which is joined with duty. That's why they always say duty and discipline. What is discipline? My definition of discipline is what you do when nobody is watching you. When there is someone supervising you, there is a boss standing on top of you, you are on the best, you are in the best foot forward. But what do you do when nobody is watching you? A. B is your mind. Have you disciplined your mind? Is your mind thinking the thoughts? Is your mind believing the thoughts that you should be believing in, which is the correct one? Are you letting it go haywire? That's the question. So that comes to self-discipline. And I think this aspect of discipline is important because of two, three things. Firstly, it forms the bulwark of a society. Any society has got its own societal rules, norms, ways, and discipline means following those properly. It brings stability to the structure and the organization that you are serving in. It was discipline that ensured when at times when we were climbing those absolutely killer slopes, minus 32 degrees Celsius, freezing, hungry, absolutely tired, almost 80 pounds worth of weight behind your back with your rifle also freezing, climbing an 80 degree incline and the enemy firing at you. In times like that, it was only discipline that kept us together. It was discipline that kept the rank and file together. It was discipline that kept us together for the attack, for the final attack on the enemy, despite the, despite the most adverse of situations. So discipline, we must practice ourselves. It means basically understanding what your shortcomings are, it means setting certain goals. Now that you are confined, you have so much time in your hand, setting certain goals, structuring your time to make sure that you do not waste time and doing something more, which is more contributory. So this all is part of discipline, which one has to take care of. Next is a little lighter moment. They say laugh. Uh, laughter is medicine. And the other one is, you know, when I was uh, a young officer, even in college, I always used to, to read only two things in the Reader's Digest. You know, used to get those small Reader's Digest. I used to read only two things in that one. One is humor in um, uh, uniform. And uh, the other one was uh, life. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, Medicine of life, yeah, which was there. Laughter, the medicine of life. And there used to be beautiful jokes over there. Because humor is something that bonds people, you know. You'll be surprised. A person who cracks jokes often, you'll always see people gathering around him. Humor can actually inspire people at times. Humor can lighten the burden that you are facing because it is required today. You see the people working tirelessly. They are tired. They have seen only tragedy. They have only seen negativity. And in a scenario like this, you see someone with a little bright face and a lovely something to lighten your burden. It's tremendous. I recollect when we were to set for the attack, 
we had to kit ourselves. When you say kit ourselves, that means get the good kit over there to make sure that during the battle, you are absolutely kitted properly. And as you know, all the forge in the whole world, there are only two sizes I always maintain. Also, this is part of the humor. We say the two sizes are either too big or too small. No other size. So I got a snow boot, which was 10 and a half size. My size is eight and a half for a snow boot. And with the result, the toe of the snow boot was here and my actual toe was here. There was such a big gap. We could play kabaddi in between. You know? That was the big gap between my toe and the toe of the snowshoe. And as we marched and the boys were saying, sir, why don't we get this thing in uh, correct size? I told them, don't worry. Don't worry. And I kept on cheering them up. And lo and behold, as we crossed the uh, near the Junklumpa Nala and we were going ahead and ahead and ahead, suddenly there was, when I was marching towards my objective, a lot of machine gun fire. Initially, it was not so accurate. But later on, as we closed in, it became more and more accurate. And then two bullets from the machine gun came and went through my uh, snow boot, toe of my snow boot. So the toe was here, my toe was here. And this bullet went right through the gap between the toe and the snow boot. And you know, even in that serious moment, I gathered whoever was around me. I said, come here. We told you Dekho. Abhi goli gaya hai, ka, uh, mein, de, kaise gaya hai, dekho, bilkul through idhar se gaya hai. And you won't believe it. My boys were tired, they were tensed up because we we're going for an attack which could mean our death. Even in that tense moment, I could see that they were feeling rejuvenated, they were feeling charged. So, please keep this humor angle in mind. I have seen a lot of people, especially as doctors and medical practitioners, when the patients come to you, they always come with a lot of hope. Because they say, if there is anyone who can save me in this life, it's going to be this doctor. And if you have a grumpy face, at that point of time, he'll say, hope is very low. But you have a bright face, and you give him hope. And this hope, I'm telling you, it multiplies your medicine and your treatment by 10 times and there is better recovery there. So I hope I get to see more smiling faces when you go out for your COVID battle, henceforth, all the doctors. The next point is regarding change. Now, if any of us are under the wrong impression that once the lockdown is over, we'll go and get back into our lives the same way with that we were doing before. You're sadly mistaken. There is going to be a paradigm shift in the way things are going to be. Right from geopolitics on to business and even your personal life is going to change as never before. You are in that moment of history where you will see a paradigm shift. Later on, when you become grandfathers, you will talk about this time, which was the turning point in the history of mankind. So be prepared for this change because change will, if you do not change, then change will change you. And once the change changes you, it's not done in a nice manner. It's rather nasty. So it is better that we change ourselves and in time. So basically, what does it entail? It entails that you need to prioritize things now. As you sit down, do not waste time on any other things. Prioritize what you have to do in life. Remember, change always starts right from the top. So whatever change that you want to bring to yourself, to your household, to your children, your family, your organization, you have to start that change. You have to be that change agent. Diagnose the problems. Because even for those people who are running businesses, you have lots to worry about. 
things are not going to be same. Those people who had roaring practices with hundreds and thousands of people waiting, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Things will change drastically. How it is going to change, I don't know. But one thing I know is it is not going to be the way it used to be. <coughs> In preparing for change, one thing very important is your communication. Please keep your communication very crisp, very clear, and involve all the layers, all the stakeholders, so that there is no confusion. You know, for all those doomsday sayers and uh, astrologers who said, world is going to come to an end, you know, this is too much, what is going to happen? Remember, World War I happened. 20 million people died. People thought things are going to be finished now for mankind. But we thrived. Spanish flu came just two years later. 50 million people died. What we are facing now is not even a fraction of what Spanish flu did to us. 50 million people died. At that time, medicine had not even advanced as much as what it is doing now. And yet, mankind has survived. Not only survived, we have thrived. It matter of fact, thrived so much that two decades later, we had World War II where 70 million people died. Again, people said, yet pralai. But we are thrived, and we are here today. So for all those doomsday sayers who say that the world is going to finish, you tell them, you are wrong, my friend, because it is already tomorrow in US. We are sitting down here. It is already tomorrow in the West. So it has not finished today. So it cannot finish today. And finally, I would like to talk to you about the timeless culture and the ethos of the Indian Army. And I would like to, you to take away few strengths from this uh, ethos that the Army so lives. It doesn't just practice, it lives this ethos. There are three words. There are three ends to it. One is Nam. Namak, Nishan. These are the three things for which an Indian Army soldier lives, breathes, fights, and dies for. Nam, Namak, Nishan. What is Nam? Nam is the name, the name of your country, the name of your organization, the name of your family. For that, they are willing to do all that. Next is Namak. What is Namak? Namak is the fidelity, the loyalty towards the organization, towards the country whose Namak you take, salt you take. And the last one is Nishan. You know, in olden days, all battles, whenever they were fought, they used to carry one flag. The king always used to be near the flag. And whenever the battle used to rage on, the soldiers always looked at the flag. Whose flag is flying? And when they saw their own flag still, that dhavaj still flying, they used to get energized, inspired, and they kept on fighting. Even though their arms were cut and they were wounded, they kept on fighting. But the moment that dhavaj was down, that's why the enemy was always trying to get that banner and to put it down. The moment the banner was down, people used to leave the battle even if they were winning the battle at that point of time. That is the strength of the flag. So the third point is the Nishan. So why I am telling you all this is we must have that patriotism in us because that is the point which I want to culminate the whole thing into. Unless you have the patriotism in you and the love for your country, you will not do many things. You will not sacrifice too many things. You will keep on cribbing. You will keep on complaining. If you have the love for your country, all the things, all the discomforts, all the problems that you are facing, you will focus more on how to overcome this problem, how to solve this problem, rather than crib 
and keep on cribbing about the problem itself. So my dear friends, with this I would say, keep a very positive outlook, focus your efforts and focus on the positive things and on the finding of the solution of the problem. Remember your duty towards yourself, your family, your society, your organization, and your nation. Keep your discipline intact because discipline is going to give you the strength to see you through all this. And of course, prepare for the change which is going to come, which will surely come. We are in this together. All of us are in this together. And together we shall prevail. And I will now end with one of the beautiful verses of uh, Iliad, which is written by Homer, I think, yes, Homer. And in the Iliad, Homer says, for every man upon this earth, for every man upon this earth, death cometh sooner or late. Death will come sooner or later. For how can man die better? But how can man die better? For the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods. So what he's saying is, for your family, for your namak, your nishan, you are willing to do. And it is the best way to go. It's the best way to go. That you are of use to your country. So if you are a patriot, Please understand your duties and do it 100%. And I appeal to all the doctors. I have seen this in the TV where in uh, Western countries, even big, big government uh, ministers, they, are, they were doctors. They have come and put on their stethoscope and they have got down onto the ground to fight. One of the beauty contestants also, she left everything and she put on a stethoscope and she is also helping fight the COVID battle over there. So please put your hands and hearts together and your minds together. All the doctors I appeal, come out. All the other people who are doing good work, carry on with the good work. And with this, I say, Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Rai. It's, it's been very, very inspirational. Uh, I'm sure everyone has picked up, uh, you know, number of different points from this conversation. We've been receiving a lot of questions. Uh, so let me just pose some to you. Um, Dr. Kirti Kumari, she says, you know, how do we fight our internal inner fears, uh, fear of the unknown? Um, because, uh, yeah, it's, and, and clearly the situation that we have around is, uh, you know, makes us quite fearful. So how do we fight this? Okay, see, uh, how to fight fear? It's a very, very tough question, Dr. Kirti, because <laughs> why we had no problems and no doubts was we had that supreme cause, you know, for which we were going. Because for everything, there is a basis, there is a focus point. And the focus point for us was that that objective that cause for which we fought. Now, if you believe strongly in some cause, the worst case scenario is what? You're going to lose your life. So what? If you feel that it's really worth it, go for it. You can overcome fear by just thinking about it. What is the worst case scenario? Is this the worst that can happen? Bring it on. And I can tell you nine out of 10 times, you will succeed and nothing will happen to you. People are scared. People fear the fear itself. The actual situation is nothing to be feared. When you take it head on, you will, you will see that it was not as bad as it looked. So don't worry about that. Uh, try to keep your head calm. Try to think about that problem which is in front of you, which is giving you that fear. And that calmness will bring that, you know. Otherwise, you have that very, very, very sinking feeling in your stomach, you know, which gives you that sinking feeling in your stomach and your whole body jams up. So when you think calmly, 
when you think positively when you focus when you have a strong cause what will happen is this fear factor actually actually multiplies your strength have you seen people have you seen a rat which has been cornered it fights like a lion and it's scared but it has the energy of a lion so remember nothing to fear you can overcome it just by thinking about this kal rai there's another question which says can you draw pa- draw parallels uh, from you know what you've been doing fighting on the border as as an army soldier uh, and the covid warriors uh, doctors paramedics and nurses who are fighting this battle uh, are there any parallels that you can draw there are parallels but i think it's a very unequal parallel because uh, i remember when i was a very young officer i was posted to the line of control we have a small bunker you have listening posts ahead and a small trench you know slightly extended trench over there which we have made <clears throat> so often the pakistanis we are on eyeball to eyeball contact so what do they do it sometimes they just uh, a sniper comes and he fires and he kills one of your guys and the machine guns open up then they start firing with the mortars is for two three reasons one is for harassing you to make you feel insecure and the second uh, occasion is when they want to divert your attention when they want to push the infiltrators in some other area or whatever it is they bring down a lot of fire on you so there was an occasion like that somewhere in the late 70s or early 80s i was a young officer and i recollect i went to one of the listening post as a routine check and in the evening this fellow fired off with the burst of a machine gun and one of our guys died and we were trapped in the trench it was a little bigger than a three man trench slightly longer believe me for two three days they didn't let us budge from there they kept on firing the moment you popped your head off he would fire at you so the dead man is there with you you have to sleep there only you have to do your ablutions on one side of the thing which is stinking it was raining so the whole uh, trench is absolutely slushy over there with all that stench and everything and the dead man over there next to you your dead body over there you can imagine a situation like that what we are got today is luxury your pay is secure your wifi is there your netflix is there your near and dear ones are at home you got everything to eat you can take cooking lessons you can do singing you can make videos and send over here what is this this is nothing this is luxury is you should i mean there is no comparison at all over there and what what is your enemy here only one fear a covid the the corona virus and how will the corona virus get you it's a passive one someone has to bring it there the enemy is active absolutely active and it comes with a bullet with your name in it so there is actually no parallel but i would say if you draw a parallel if you think about it you will only feel happy that we are living in a lap of luxury so my friends it's a state of mind you got to just tune your mind properly and you will believe that you are having a good time it's you can just say that the god has pressed the pause button for you to look inwards you know do a little soul searching and study yourself kan rai i think there are a lot of questions on this particular topic uh, and uh, dr mahesh uh, dr roy all of them and many such other doctors have written this question uh, that you know what happens i mean how do you how do you how how should they be reacting when uh, patients don't value them as much they are fighting this war against covid uh, yet there are attacks happening on doctors uh, uh, they are abusing abuses being hurled at them uh, you've got house owners who don't want them to stay in their houses anymore so what's what's your view here what do you think uh, that the doctors should be doing in a situation like this see you use the correct word which actually explains everything when you said that how should you react to this all this is because of reaction 
we should not be reacting we should be responding firstly okay it is basically a reaction half of it is due to ignorance half it half of it is because people do not read your intention correctly so maybe the preparation that went for it was not adequate it is always the intention behind any action that makes the difference upon how the other person reacts or responds to you now if your father gives you one slap even today at this age you will not fight and try to physically attack your father or your elder brother you will never do that because you know the intention behind that is always that he loves you but he is trying to correct you you know that heart of hearts we are human beings but if a third person who comes whom you do not know and he just slaps you what will you do you will actually murder that guy you will finish him i i would have sort of strangled him there and there only so your intent you have gone with good intention but he doesn't know there you cannot blame him it's always two way he doesn't know your intention then of course your uh, there are a lot of people who are ignorant and because of this ignorance also this thing happens so i think you should take it in the rough and tumble and only go with a better preparation next time and uh, with a better bandobast and where people are reacting so violently for it there must be a reason for it i am i you know i refuse to believe that they are reacting just because they have been told they are reacting because they have a lot of fear fear factor could be one it could be communal they are thinking that you are tar- targeting that community fear factor could be that they think that if by chance something happens my whole family will be scattered these people will be absolutely ruthlessly pulling us apart over here and i'll be there this will be there so that that fear is also there so someone has to sort of be there to educate these people to tell them so high handedness will not work here i think understanding their problems understanding their uh, fears we i think we need to sort of somehow convey this to them i think uh, there's another question from dr sanjay sen he he loves your talk uh, and thanks you for it uh, but he's saying you know uh, you obviously could see the enemy uh, when you were fighting them how do you fight an enemy who's all around you and you can't really see him yeah <laughs> so uh, uh, dr saab dr roy right yeah dr sen, roy dr sen dr sen Uh, even this situation don't uh, feel that we forces have not faced we are facing that when we are doing the counter terrorist operations he is all around you but you don't know who he is their faces in front of you one of them may be your terrorist it has happened so many times they have gone under your nose you don't know who he is so this uh, problem is faced by us also in the army when you do the counter terrorist operations or when you are in uh, kashmir valley fighting the terrorists we don't know who the terrorist is you kill one wrong man you had it the human rights and all those things and there are people who are paying for the blood of a soldier over there so we are facing this problem yes it is like fighting with your hands tied behind your back but then that's how it is we have to make best with whatever knowledge one has and you being a doctor i know you will find ways and means to fight this covid some way or the other you have already done that in a passive way by you know wearing of your gloves and masks and sanitizers and things like that you will find a way where there is a problem i won't say there is a solution there are more than three solutions so you will find it <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you colonel rai thank you um there is another question um uh, clearly i think uh, most people believe and i i saw this uh, today some place where they said the world is now going to be divided into ac uh, and and bc before corona and after corona right <laughs> so obviously the the world is going to change uh, and adaptability would be key uh, yes. do you have any suggestions or thoughts from your time in the army uh, where adaptability was very important and how do you believe people should react to this new uh um, you know uh new age so to say see 
adaptability adaptability is also one of the processes of change management so i i have a formula for that i say adapt adopt adapt that means first whenever you are faced with something which is not suiting for which you have to make that little bit of adaptation otherwise you are finished so you adapt to that change okay otherwise you will be crushed you will be finished you will be at a disadvantage after that slowly you bring that into your thought process and you adopt it yourself as if it is your thought process too make it your thought process too don't keep on fighting ye to kar liya maine yaar lekin you know if this would have happened are this that stop cribbing adopt it because that is the order of the day because if you had not adapted to that you would have been finished so obviously that is the need of the hour so you adopt that you bring it into your system you bring it into your thought process and you adopt to that whole process or the whole thing and after that make sure you are the best at it make sure you are the top person at it you make yourself adept so i hope this three formula will work for you adapt adopt and adapt so kanal rai i think uh, we have a question from some someone who probably has seen one or two of your youtube videos uh, clearly i think the question is you know how did you uh, what you were you were right on top of kaluba post and uh, you had two bullets left uh, oh. you know what was going through your mind uh while you had the pakistanis coming towards you once you had captured it thought process was very clear see you are not a individual when i am there i am not there in a capacity as an individual i am the commanding officer of a battalion of the gurkha rifles which has got a very 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 proud heritage which has got a fantastic culture and it's got a fantastic name in the whole world not only india so that is one thing which i carry on my shoulder and on top of that is the individual who is lalit rai who may exist or may not exist the next uh, few moments because these counter attacks are coming and you've got only two bullets and the third one is the survival part of it how as a uh, army officer as a uh, leader of the pack of people which group of people which are there how do i maintain and how do i keep on retaining this place can i do it with such limited ammunition so these are the three four things which were battling in my mind you know so two bullets i said one bullet to i will surely take proper aim till i see the white of the eyes you know you know we say fire only when you see the white of his eyes that means he's so close and you can't miss because you can't afford to miss that bullet you can't waste it till i see the whites of his eyes i will fire and i'll kill that guy but the second bullet i said when everything else fails and there is a chance that i just might get captured by these guys overpowered by them physically i do not want to be a prisoner as a gurkha battalion commanding officer i can't even think of becoming a prisoner of war so that bullet i had said i will keep for myself so that was what the thought process was going on at that point of time very difficult yeah i mean the the type of a situation that one went through when i sometimes think about it i get the you know I, i sweat from the nape of my neck and i get up with a nightmare it was such a terrible situation terrible it is only god and the discipline and all those things that i have gone undergone that training which pulled me through that's why i keep on harping on this aspect of duty and discipline it gives you so much of focus it gives you so much of strength others as a normal ordinary human being it is well nigh impossible to go through all those ordeals and ryan uh, this is just a question from my side um 
I mean, honestly, as a commanding officer, uh, I guess it's, it's uh, you know, all of us in the corporate world uh, feel it's okay, uh, you know, to let the troops go ahead, right? You took the troops right and uh, you, you led the troops right from the front. Uh, you were amongst the first few or the, you know, the people who reached uh, the Kalubar the top. Kalubar top. Um, I mean, what went through your mind? Uh, clearly, that's that's not very human. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, Anuj, it's very simple. It's very simple. That's why I said, uh, lead from the front. That's our motto. We always lead from the front. And that's what separates us from the corporate. You know, even in our normal drill, when you're on an extended line formation and you're advancing towards the enemy, and suddenly you come across a minefield, suddenly we change our formation and make it to the file formation, one behind the other. Because per yard frontage, we know how much is the depth of the minefield, approximately one and a half to two kilometers maximum. And in that one yard frontage, we'll have one, two, maximum two mines. And that means only the first two guys will go, the rest will at least be safely through. We make that into a rod formation, right? So now, in a situation like that, when we make the formation, automatically the guy with the prodder, who's a pioneer fellow, he will come in front over there. The next fellow will be the army officer who himself will come and stand there. And then he'll tell the rest, get in line. And everybody follows. In the corporate, if you had to hit a minefield, there would be no first man standing there. The moment you stand there and someone stands behind you, you'll go behind him. You know. <laughs> so I've seen that myself. So when you have a leadership like this, which is standing in front and says, behind me, will you not follow a leader like that? So that is the type of leadership that I'm talking about. The day, the day you guys can, in the corporate can do this and have a guy who's sitting in front and standing in front over there in the minefield and say, keep stand behind me, risking himself first over there. I think that will be the day the whole thing will shift and the leadership will get a very different hue. Absolutely. No, I think this is a huge lesson for all of us, but I can assure you at least uh, this corporate that's speaking to you, they lead from the front. <laughs> Good. I'm very, very happy and I'm sure about that, Anuj. You are uh, yourself a foggy kid and I'm 100% sure about that. Sure. Uh, I think a lot of questions uh, on, on, on motivation, especially self-motivation, uh, uh, Colonel Sir. I think uh, I know you've answered them before, but if there's anything that you'd like to, you know, leave them with, uh, uh, leave all our doctor friends and, and, and paramedics with uh, as to how do you motivate yourself? How do you motivate your staff? Um, how do you make sure that this war against COVID can be won? See, I can only say one or two things. And one or two things I say is, you know, people always follow leaders who are very honest and very uh, who have got a very clear set of communications. And they're very honest. A leader does not mean that he doesn't have any faults in him, that he has no flaws, that he's 100% okay. No. A leader will have shortcomings. A leader will have some problems and issues. But he's at least honest about it and your, his people know about it and they take it along in the stride and he's a good leader and he communicates and he's honest about it. On the other hand, there is a leader who's very smart, very knowledgeable, very everything, but, but his honesty is slightly shaky. He may not be very honest with his troops in his communication or otherwise. So he may be a hypocrite. So such type of leaders, believe me, however well talented they may be, however knowledgeable, however well educated, they will never, never pass the test of a leader. So all I can say is, please be honest with your people. Please come across with communication which is crisp and clear. Be transparent in your dealings. Be fair to everyone. And the rest will follow. And as far as self-motivation is concerned, please use the commando prayer that we all use. 
it is basically for self motivation is motivation is basically in your mind if you can control your mind nothing can touch you so the prayer is hotter the better ye kya garmi hai isse bhi garmi hone do very good wetter the better what is this so much rain let it rain even more no problem colder the better what is this cold let it be even further minus no problem and anything the better so for a person who's got an attitude like this hotter the better colder the better wetter the better anything the better can anyone do anything to that man it is basically here so when we say self motivation don't keep doing or saying thing and reading things just control this just control your attitude towards life and everything will be sorted out i hope i have answered the question you have thank you so much sir it's it's been an absolute pleasure uh, interacting with you uh, i think these are tough times unprecedented times times like we've never seen before i'm quite certain the talk that you've given uh, the complete medical fraternity uh, would be really really inspirational and i'm sure uh, that at the end of it we will win this war against covid 19 uh, with the help of this huge fraternity that we have here of doctors paramedics and nurses i i Thank have a again. lot uh, i have a lot uh, i mean they have done a lot for me I, my best friends are a lot of doctors and uh, i have nothing but respect for them so i salute them and i request them please come out come out use your knowledge use your talent and uh, use your skills to help everyone to help humanity and help us overcome because like i said before we are in this together and together we shall win jai hind jai hind thank you thank you so much shall i leave